Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and Happy New Year. Welcome to 2014. Today I want to uh, do a follow-up video to a video I did about two years on how to make uh, clean interior elevations in ARCHICAD. I'll put a link to the that old video here and probably at the end as well, so if you haven't seen that video, here's a link. It's worth watching because uh, it's a good technique on how to um, create uh, masks for areas you need to hide in a model, but it's a technique that for interior elevations I no longer use because I have a much better solution. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that and then if there's time at the end maybe talk about some other things with the interior elevation tool. So what you're looking at right here is 100% 3D. There is no masking whatsoever, it's just ARCHICAD doing its wonderful magic. So let's walk through how that happens. Um, okay, so I've got a little sample building here, and uh, let's just go ahead and make it a chair elevation real quick. So I'm going to eyedropper that because I've got the settings I want all set up, and I'm going to go to the edges of the room, draw the box, and then uh, what this is coming in is where the sections are going to be cut. So you'll see if we select this, it's looking to the edges of the room, and then each one of these is an individual, um, basically, section within the interior elevation tool. Um, so if we right-click and uh, open that, we'll see this is what ARCHICAD creates. It's kind of garbagey. If you notice, I'm missing the ceiling, I'm missing the, uh, the floor. Um, it's, it's all there. If we go take a look at um, this building section real quick. Um, I guess I don't have a roof. Oh. But still, it's it wouldn't show that even if it um, was there. Um, so, what's happening here? Um, if we look at the interior elevation, oh, we can actually look it up here. It's this interior elevation is only going to the ceiling and the floor. It's uh, not going any higher than that. So, what that means, just like. Um, we're only going to the edge of the wall here. Uh, this here is my, my base board. I can get rid of that so you can see. We're just going to the edge of the wall. We're not seeing everything. So this is the first trick to do. Um, if I go down to this next year interior elevation, this lower level here, I've made another interior elevation, and I've taken the interior elevation into the wall. So instead of stopping at the edge of the wall, we're going into it a bit. So what happens now if we open up, say, this guy. I'm also setting it six inches below the floor and, and um, up to the top of the the story. We're now seeing you know, everything, which means if I turn off the line weights, I'm getting thick lines everywhere. Okay? So, that is cool. Um, if we open up this section, just move this down so it's actually in the window. Um, if we open up this guy, you know, we're now seeing the the door and the window. That's the other thing that was missing. If you only go to the edge, if we open up this, you can see a little bit there, but you can't really, you're not getting the benefit of seeing the window and the door in section. So by going into the wall, we're going to start seeing that. And so what we can do is take this a step further and start aligning this. Um, moving that section cut, you know, until we get the full um, you know, window in place. I'm not going to bother doing exact, but you can see we've now got the full contour of the window there. We can do the same with the door, pull it in until we just see, you know, um, we just see this stuff. We don't see that. Um, so that's now getting the, the shape completed. And the, uh, so if we go down one more, I've done this now all pretty. Um, now this is, this is pretty much perfect. We get, we have the casing, we get the door here, over, we got the baseboard, um, we got the window outline. Now, if we go up to, um, document set model view, model view options, go down to override fill display, we're going to click override cup fills. Now if we do, um, no fill, 
show skin separator lines, and hit OK. All the fills go away, but we still see those lines. If we go back to that, uh, and uh, turn off show skin separator lines under model view options, hit OK. Now all that stuff, all that garbage in beyond the cut disappears, and we're left with that pure thing. Um, I'm going to go back. So this is regular model view options. And uh, if you go ahead, I recommend saving a model view option, which is interior elevations, where you can turn on cut override pill, fills, show no fills, and show skin, and turn off show skin separator lines. Um, you then get that set up. And so you can just change it here under quick options. And so there we have it. It's, we're done. Um, a couple of other quick things. If we go to, uh, I'm going to open up that. So this is something that's really nice. You know, we're getting the um, cut through this uh, piece of cabinetry. Go to get real fancy, change my black pen sets. Now we see that even prettier. Um, if we, uh, by turning off the, um, set this all back, um, you see what happened there? By changing the um, turn off separator lines and override the fills, it, uh, ARCHICAD knows to get rid of the line between these objects. So this is seen right here. If we just turn it on, true line weight, we're getting a fat line, which I hate. Um, if we go back to model view options, override, no fill, turn off skin separator lines, hit OK, that all disappears. So we're able to get this awesome, super pretty, clean outline um, with whatever kind of shapes are, are coming into the room for cabinetry, for baseboard, for trim, for head casing, for shelving, for whatever you want to put into it. It is super fast, works great. Um, this, we just have to, I guess that's a little too high, we'd have to bring that down. So we take this and say, let's bring it to 9 foot 9. Now we open that, the, that line disappears. There's a couple other tricks, um, which I'm going to save for another video, because I'm still working out the tweaks on um, getting baseboard to show correctly, uh, just as a spoiler for that. If we go to this section, we turn on tree line weights. You see how that's all garbage in there. We've got a lot of heavy lines, um, but that's perfect. Uh, I've got a couple tricks on how to make that work. Um, here's another example, which is really pretty. And I'm going to do another video which explains that probably later this week or next week, but i got to work out a few more things. Um, but I hope you guys follow that and understand how to now make super fast, super clean, uh, pretty much perfect interior elevations. I will admit, um, every software there's a couple little odd lines if we just go to that. So here's this perfect thing. We get this little run over here because of the window object. I, I can live with that. No contractor is going to give me shit for that, so that's fine. Um, while we're talking about interior elevations, uh, one, two nice things I like to do, or three nice things I like to do about the um, marker itself. Um, you want the reference ID to be the, the number. If you go here, you can select the auto text. Um, so you want elevation number. That gives it the 1, 2, 3, 4. Under the name, so this is, this is what actually shows up here in the, um, the navigator, the project map, or the view map. Um, you know, this 01 is the number, the reference ID, so it's the elevation number. After this, it says North Sample Room Elevation. So what I've done is set the name for each one of these um, four views to be the orientation of the view. So it's the North Elevation, the East, the South, the West, followed by the zone name. So it's picking up um, the name of the zone that this entire elevation is in, followed by the word elevation. So if you look over here, the project map. Um, so this is this right here is the central elevation marker. Uh, you see it says 01 north sample elevation. 
So this is the zone. This is the zone that the central edition is. If we change this to Jared's office, we'll see over here this updated to North Jared's office elevation, East Jared's office elevation, etc. Um, so that's all I got today. I hope that's all clear. If you don't follow that last bit, just ask some questions in the comments and I'll clarify it. It was kind of a last minute thing I want to add because, again, setting up these cuts in this interior elevation to um, go beyond the walls and change the model view options makes the interior elevation super clean. And then knowing how to set up the interior elevation marker to um, have the name based on the zone that the Elevation, interior elevation is in, and then this orientation um, zone name, like non auto text word elevation, means you save this as a favorite, you drop it into all your rooms, and all your interior elevations are labeled and beautiful and perfect. Uh, oh, last thing, um, you might be wondering what these dashed red lines are. Under view on screen options, you can turn on and off the marker range. For this video, I've turned it on to make it. Uh, easy to understand if we turn those off you could just select the intro elevation and if you know where to where to um, where those lines are you can select them so you can also see the, the cursor changes over there. It's a little tricky that's why I like um, view on screen options to turn on the uh, marker range and then what that dashed red line is controlled by you notice mine is different than yours. Under, let's see, on-screen options, under work environment, you can change the line type and pen of marker elevations on-screen only parts, so that dash line for sections, elevations, and interior elevations, I went with the dash, and I picked my warning always red on. So That's all I got for you today. Thank you very much. Again, Happy New Year. I got some more videos planned, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks.